Hi everyone. So this is an example uh, that accompanies lecture 13 on fixed point methods. Um, and in this example, I want to highlight um, how to solve uh, uh, a nonlinear equation, a single nonlinear equation using Picard's method and also using Newton's method in Python. So let's jump right in. So I have here a code loaded up um, for Picard's method. I have a similar one for Newton's method we'll get to in just a second. And I'm just going to step through how to solve this problem, okay? And the problem I want to solve, I'm going to highlight right here real quick. Um, so I want to find the roots of x squared equals 4, all right? Um, in Picard's method, if you recall, you rewrite this equation in standard form. So you rewrite it as f of x is equal to x squared minus 4, where you bring this over because f of x has to equal 0. Then the g of x for the fixed point method, um, you just add x to both sides. So you're going to have, you know, for remember that for a fixed point method, you have x equals g of x. So here now we're going to have x plus f of x. So it's going to be x squared plus x minus 4. And then the iterative process will look like this. We're going to take x at k, square at x at k minus 4, and then we're going to make that x at k plus 1 and move on and iterate through our loop. So let's look at that here in Python. So I'm going to define two guys. I'm going to define the f of x, which is uh, what I have right here. Um, and then g of x, which is f of x plus x. So I write two functions that just simply return those values. Um, and then before my iterative loop, I'm going to define a couple things. So first I'm going to define x as my initial guess. My initial guess here is 1.5. Um, and I'm going to define a maximum number of iterations. I'm going to do this because I have a while loop, and I don't want my while loop to go to infinity um, in case there's something funky goes on. And we'll see that that actually comes in handy here. Um, and then I'm going to define my residual as the absolute value of f of x. Well, why is that my residual? Well, recall that this f of x was set equal to 0. So if I have a root, this should be 0. So this f of x is in sometimes what we call residual form. So if, you know, if I'm close to the right answer, it should give me something that's close to 0. So this is a good way to tell whether I've converged at the right answer or not. And then I start out here with a counter. Um, I call it i in this particular example. It could have been k. It could have been any other counter variable that I want. i is pretty common in, in, uh, in loops, right? And I'm going to have a while loop, and I'm going to say, well, my um, residual is greater than some small value. So, so long as the residual is bigger than something little, like 10 to the minus 8, keep going. And here I just have a little print statement, so that, I, and, and maybe we'll just run this guy um, up to here. You know, so we kind of get this out of the way, so we define our functions. And I'm going to actually clear over here the screen I was messing with earlier. Okay, so we run here. We run that code. Great. f of x is defined. g of x is defined. Right? We have x is 1.5. Everything's working swimmingly. All right? So now we can run our loop. And what's going to happen in our loop? Well, we're going to print out i. We're going to print out the value of x. We're going to print out the value of the residual. And then we need to update all those things. So I update x by evaluating g of x and assigning it to x. Update the residual by taking the absolute value and again evaluating f. Um, and then I update i by incrementing it by 1. Um, and then I'm going to check, and as, uh, as you're going to see, Picard's method doesn't actually converge for this problem. So I'm going to check that if i is greater than the maximum number of iterations I set, um, or equal to, then I'm going to print all that stuff out, and then I'm going to say it doesn't converge, and I'm going to break out of the loop because I don't want to keep going forever and ever. So let's run this loop and see what happens. Okay. And look over here, hopefully my face isn't in the way. We see on the first iteration, I have my guess, I have g of x that gets updated. Um, and on my, you know, second, you know, that's the very first one. So now that gets plugged in for i equals 1. And x now gets updated from g of x. And remember this piece here, this is, this is the residual. So the residual is quite high, okay? 1.75 isn't very close. Um, and then what happens is I... You know, I have a new value of x. It gets plugged in. My residual actually gets worse. And my residual keeps getting worse, and I'm not converging to the right answer. And eventually, it becomes really clear that I'm not going to get there. Um, and what this does is it breaks out of the loop. It says, look, I've reached the maximum number of iterations. You should have had there, gotten there by 5. Okay? And I can mess with this if I want. I can make this 10 iterations. I don't actually need that guy yet. Let me move that out of the way. Okay? Um, I can have 10 iterations if I want. And if I run that again, what happens is this thing actually starts to get, um, well, I need to re restart that one. This guy starts to get really big, right? This starts to get, you know, two time, or 1 times 10 to the 252. All right, great. So, you know, I don't need those number of iterations at all. And so it turns out I can go ahead and plot this. So this is what this is going here. Oh, this plot's really small. Let's make it 
fig size is equal to, uh, I don't know what, 10 by 8. And let's see if we can make the font size. Font, let's do size is equal to 24 to match the size of everything else we have going on. Yeah, that's a little bit better, right? Okay, uh, maybe we even make it a little wider, 12 by 8. There we go, look at that. Okay, so now in this figure, if I look at this, right, this is the, the, the function I was plotting, x squared minus 4. And I know my roots should have been at, you know, 2 and minus 2. Okay, this is an easy problem to do. Um, but, you know, the way this thing's shooting off when I go run it, right, it's not even getting close, even when I guessed 1.5, right? Now, if I guess like 1.99, I wonder what happens here. Um, it still doesn't converge, okay? So Picard's method's actually pretty terrible um, for this particular problem. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And then this problem, the way I've set it up here, it doesn't work. It's no good. So let's go ahead and try Newton's method instead. So Newton's method, if you recall, um, in Newton's method, um, now we're solving the same problem, x squared equals 4. And in Newton's method, you have to know the f and you have to know f prime, the derivative. So f is again in residual form, x squared minus 4. f prime, you take the derivative of this. Um, the derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of 4 is 0. Um, and you get this guy. And the formula is x is equal to x of k minus f of x, which is x squared minus 4 on the top, divided by 2x. Right? And so that's what's going to go into our Newton's method uh, uh, formula over here. Right? So the same um, approach going on here. So again, we import numpy on our plotting, and we calculate f. And this time, instead of g, I'm going to calculate, you know, I'm going to write down what the derivative is. Okay? So let me um, run this cell. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and clear the screen again. Um, and we'll run this guy there. All right? Um, and again, I'm going to define a maximum number of iterations. I'm going to have an initial guess. I don't know. We'll give it 1.5 to see the same thing. And I define a residual, which is, again, the absolute value of f in residual form. Um, and now I say, while the, the residual is greater than 10 to the minus 8, again, print i, x, and the residual. And then now I'm going to execute Newton's methods formula, or right, Newton's uh, method, the formula for Newton's method. So here I'm going to make x assigned to the old x minus f of x divided by derivative of f of x. That's exactly the formula that I had before, okay? If I wanted, I could define a g of x. That's just these things, but it's, I think it's more convenient to just type that right out. I'm going to update the residual. I'm going to update i. And again, I'm going to check if it's greater than there. Then I'm going to print out that same stuff. Tell me, you know, where it broke and tell me if the iteration didn't converge, okay? So let me run this guy and see what happens, all right? And if we look at the iteration, the first time I guess 1.7, 1.5, it returned a negative 1.75 on a residual. So, uh, you know, uh, not great, right? But then once that um, the value that it returns gets, um, you know, it calculates this 2.08, that's a lot. That's pretty close. That gets a residual that's you know pretty close. Then I plug that in, and eventually I get down here to where I have a pretty small residual. Um, and my final answer that it prints out, we can go ahead and. Print that guy out down here. What's the final thing that it determines? Um, you know, it finds 2.00 out to like, you know, eight decimal places. Okay, so it's done a really good job. And if I come down here and run um, a plotting and just look at this plot, oh, and we have the same problem with the plot. Let me just copy these two guys over so that we have a nice, pretty plot that everyone can see. Oh. How come it's not? That's weird, huh? Oh, it's because I have figure right there. That's why. Sorry about that. Okay, so um, now if I have this nice plot, this green dot right here, what I'm plotting right there, is the x value that I found. Okay, so I've converged to that solution. So now what happens if I want to find the other root? So I've managed to find this root. What happens if I want to find the other one? So I can try a different initial guess. So suppose I guess um, negative 3. That puts me out over here. If I guess negative 3 and rerun this guy, notice that I now converge to the negative 2 root, which is over here and um, right there. Okay? Um, and I could, if I want, you know, suppose I think that 8 decimal points isn't enough. I could reduce this now even more, and suppose I want to go down to 10 to the minus 14. Well, let me run that guy, and now it goes even one more step, and my residual gets down really crazy small, and now I get something so close that Python's even telling me my residual is zero. I mean, that's a little ridiculous, the residual's not zero, but it's got really tiny, 
okay, to the machine precision, and it's it's figured it out, okay. So um, that's fixed point methods uh, in in Python. Um, the key part to a fixed point method is one getting the right formula, okay. If you mess up the formula, you're going to mess up the method, okay. The second part is programming this loop in, all right, and doing all of this correctly. I recommend doing a while loop, um, but you can also do it with a for loop. You just have to make sure your maximum number of, of counts in the for loop is enough. Um, but I like doing a while loop with uh, the, uh, you know, a, a little extra guard there in case we don't go over. Um, and then um, the last key is making sure that you have your initial guesses right. Uh, make sure that you guess something that's somewhat reasonable or else you can have something that doesn't converge. Or in the case of Noon's method, if you guess where the derivative is equal to zero, that's in the denominator. So if I try and guess a zero here, you'll see that that gives me a problem, okay, and it gives me a division by zero. And even if I guess something really small, it's probably going to have a really hard time converging, okay? Notice I guess 10 to the minus 8. That means I start shooting off into infinity really quickly, and that thing has a really hard time converging. Okay, so you know, don't guess near the bottom, um, you know, uh, near a, near a zero. Okay, and and then you should be fine. Okay, so with that, I'll thank you for your attention and, and hope this video helped you. Have a good one.